Hey everyone and welcome back to my studio. I feel like I haven't filmed my face in ages so hey welcome back and welcome to anyone who is new to the channel and hasn't seen my face yet. In today's video I wanted to show you how I make my stickers at home. Different techniques I use, the paper that I use, the printer that I use and also how I set up my files to save as much paper as possible and I'm also going to be making some stickers traditionally so no printer used and um, that's something I'm very excited about and yeah let's get into the video let's go the paper that I use is the PPD inkjet creative media paper and they both have it in glossy and matte for my stickers in my store I use the glossy paper because I like the shine of it and that's the first one I bought and I'm very happy with the quality both matte and glossy they look very high quality and they also are water resistant. So if you have raindrops coming onto your paper or onto your sticker, um, the ink won't flow away, which is very important if you want them on like a laptop or on your car or something. Of course, because they are homemade, they're not going to be as sturdy as super professional vinyl stickers that you buy online. Okay, um, I set my files up in Photoshop. I create um, an A4 piece of paper practically in a 600 dpi resolution and I place all the Photoshop files of the stickers I want to print onto the paper so that you save as much space as possible. Yeah, I drew them each individually and kept them as transparent Photoshop files and then I placed them all together onto the she then I export this file as a PDF and now I can print my stickers. The printer that I use is the HP OfficeJet Pro and it's a very cheap and very affordable printer I think and the quality is still very nice. I really like the way especially prints come out. The quality is yeah for the price you I wasn't really expecting a printer that good and um, I've been having it for quite a while now and I haven't had any problems with it so I can recommend getting this printer if you don't have a lot of money in the beginning and still want to sell stickers. Um, the HP printer comes with an app that lets you make all the settings before printing on your iPad or your phone and I really like this because printers can be confusing and this app is very user friendly and could be used by my grandma because it's so simple and so easy that's something i really appreciate yeah i i press print and then the stickers are getting printed out To package the orders I use this small bag that I bought on Amazon and I'm also using this thicker sketching paper where I printed the label on. Um, I fold them in half like this so you have the title and the small image on the front and then also the link to my shop in the back in case someone's wondering where they got the stickers from. And I package them all in here. Close it like this. And then I use this basic stapler to staple them together. Like this. Another way I have been making stickers in the past month or so is through Sticker App. 
they were so kind to send me a few of their sticker materials or sticker types as samples. They asked for my designs and then printed them for me, which is very cool. And they print both matte and glossy as well. They have all different types of finishes and it was super easy to submit. And even the holographic finish, you don't even have to format your file in a special way. You can only, if you place the order, leave a note in the order. <laughs> that says, oh, I want you to make the hair holographic or I want to make the shoes holographic. No need to format your file in any special way. What you can of course still do is make everything you want be to be holographic transparent. That way those parts are going to be holographic. Okay, let's get to the exciting part. Now we're going to be doing the traditional sticker. And I really want to do some Snodgo fern art because I haven't really used my green Posca pen yet. And I want to, yeah, do some fern art for her for this traditional sticker. I want her to be wearing her signature red pants and the red star top. So I'm going to um, have a pose a little. And I'm just using some scraps I still have left over from printing out labels. I keep them separately in my studio to be able to use them when I need them to make stickers like this one. Because this isn't vinyl paper it's very simple label paper you can easily draw on top if it was glossy vinyl paper I don't think you would be able to even draw like this on it so this is very good for making stickers yourself or drawing them traditionally I really like hairstyles in cartoon characters and also in people, of course, where you have a lot of stuff going on around the face, not just the hair going down straight like with usual hairstyles. You have these all these kind of small parts that frame the face and that make it look a lot cooler and yeah, that's a look I really appreciate in characters. And something I've learned that helps you a lot with drawing easy dynamic poses is to have contrasting lines. So if the shoulders go up here and down here, you want the hips to be in contrast so that they go like this. This one goes up here and this one goes up here. So you have this kind of movement going on in your pose. That's a super easy way. If you don't know what pose to draw, just draw these two lines and then just kind of connect the body around them and you will immediately have a pose you can work with. When you draw hands, it's super easy to if you just kind of put in the hand shape that you want to have in the end and then just kind of separate it up into fingers so you have enough space for all of your fingers you want to put in kind of like this and then from that on you can just fill them in and then it's a lot easier because you already know where you have to draw the individual shapes Hmm. Maybe I want the two fingers to stick together like this one and then the small one separated and the... Yeah. And maybe also some... Yeah, okay. She has the super cool red le um, leather or latex pants, I'm not really sure. Um, 
but I just had to draw them. They were perfect for the sticker. If you don't know who Snot Girl is, it's a comic character um, of a comic book series by Leslie Hung and Brian Lee O'Malley. And um, I don't have a lot of time to read comics, but I do enjoy doing that. And Snot Girl is a series I've really been enjoying reading and the artwork is just amazing and the storyline is also very funny and super cool so I can really recommend you checking the comic out and yeah giving it a read there are a lot of issues I don't know how many but just get one or two and start reading um yeah I can really recommend getting into the story and learning more about Snotty and her fun personality. Okay, we now have the sketch down and I kind of want to do a mix between Copic markers and also Posca pens. So we have something that's not as opaque as Posca pens, but also have some way of adding just light touches of color. Like for the skin, I'm, um, I'm using the Stifer marker to add in some simple shadows, just nothing Nothing too fancy, just a little bit of shadow so the face has more depth. And I also have this super cool copy color which is E04 and it's lipstick natural and it's a very beautiful yeah, lipstick color that looks super natural like the name already says and it looks just like something Snotty would wear. She also has this dark grayish eyeshadow so I'm going to use the same color to add it in over here as you can see when you draw with those kind of markers on the paper it looks very dark but as it dries it becomes a lot more light and so don't be scared Okay, now I'm going to go in with my green Posca pen and I'm going to add in her hair. Oh, this one's super vibrant. And I have to be careful with layering the pen because this paper isn't as thick as mixed media paper for example so we only have one layer before the paper starts acting up I'm adding these kind of shiny bits to her pants to make them look more like they're latexy or leather pants, whatever they're supposed to be, to give them more dimension. Oh, I realize I kind of messed up over here. She's just going to have more hip <laughs> now. <clears throat> okay. The bracelet is also going to be the same material. Okay. Now I'm going to let this dry and then we're going to be going in with the line art. Okay, the Posca pen is now all nice and dry and now I'm going to be going in with my Kuritake Fu Furikokoshi brush pen um, to do the line work. I'm scared to mess up the eyes because they are the most important part. And I really like how the paper held up the 
Posca pen for the pants because I later went in and added another layer because I didn't like the coverage we were having and yeah the paper took it very well and it all worked out Wow, I don't remember how I did her hair at all. So we're just going to wing it, I think. And already now that I've been doing a lot of traditional art with you guys in these videos, I'm already learning a lot of stuff and I'm getting more practice at yeah, doing traditional art and I'm really enjoying the process lately. So. Yeah, I think I'm going to be doing some more of those in the future. I'm also adding in some more blush to her cheeks and her hands and stuff so she has some more life to her and yeah I think we are about done with the sticker. <coughs> she maybe also needs some highlights. Nothing too fancy, but maybe to get some more depth into the hair and her pants. Okay, I think we're done. I'm not going to cut her out. Of course, the sticker is pretty huge and um, not the usual size that you would be selling stickers at, but I mean, why not? You can, of course, also do smaller stickers if you want. And the cool thing about doing stickers traditionally is you can whip up any sticker just for the occasion. So if you need something like a happy birthday sticker, you can just draw that up and then make it for your friend or something add their name no problem super easy to do and yeah i may add some more red to the stars so they are more opaque and if you wait for the Posca pen to dry, it's super easy to layer more Posca on top if you want to make the color more opaque. Yeah, this is the finished sticker. Um, I'm going to have this Snot Girl sticker up in my store. Because it's an original piece and traditional sticker, there's only one available. So grab her if you want to give her a new home. My store is going to be linked down below as always. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Um, I hope you learned something from this video. If not, I hope you still had a good time. Um, you probably all know approximately how to make stickers, but I wanted to show you just how I do it, which is very simple and very easy to do. And I'm always curious to know what printers people use and what paper people use. So yeah, um, I'm curious to know do you guys also make stickers at home and um, do you prefer glossy or do you prefer mud paper because I'm more of a glossy person I think but lately I've preferred mud finish as well. So yeah, leave that down below um, and yeah, I will be seeing you very soon in my next video. Bye!